Hello, my sunshine students and families. It's Miss Tara coming again today with another STEM post and some fun stuff that we can do together. Miss Tara is at our lake house, so I've got my kiddos here and my husband, of course, and it could be crazy and you might hear lots of weird sounds because they're doing homework just like you are on the computer today. So I wanna do a new one and the links I think are working. So here is our new papers that you guys are gonna be able to print off, mommy or daddy or whoever's with you. So we are gonna talk about a chain reaction. And it is so fun because we get to build and we get to learn and we get to play together and we get to do it together. And what better day than when it's kind of cold outside than to plan something exciting like this experiment inside. Okay, so some of our materials. So we know when we do our um, scientific method that we are gonna ask a question. And our question is, can we build a chain reaction? And will the chain reaction work? So it's just a movement of energy. That's our question. The materials that we're gonna need, Ms. Tara has listed in the material box. And I've also got some here. Obviously you guys can modify your materials as much as you want. But I think a good thing that we can use for our chain reaction is gonna be dominoes. Another good thing for a chain reaction would be a stack of cups that we can make into some kind of pyramid or something like that. You're gonna need a vehicle of some sort. So this is one of my son's trucks. Miss Tara also has a ramp. I'm gonna show you right here. Here's our ramp, because we're gonna talk about some potential energy and some kinetic energy. And Miss Tara also has some Legos. So we can build different ramps with our Legos and we can, um, and I have a ball, because a ball is gonna be also exciting when we take on different forms of our energies. Okay, so I made, we are gonna measure today, and as you can see, Ms. Tara used a stack of cards, and I just laid them out, because we as scientists can measure using any form of measurement that we want. So each card we can count. Um, I'm gonna say that our cards are probably about three inches long, maybe two and a half inches, I'm not sure. If you wanna be very um, precise, as some of my students I know are. Um, okay, so we are gonna get ready. We've asked our question, can we build this chain reaction? Now I've shown you all of our materials that we're gonna use to do our chain reaction. Now we're gonna set up our experiment. So in order to do that, we're gonna talk a little bit about energy. So, if Miss Tierra has a car at the top of a ramp right here, we have potential energy. So that is just stored energy. Now, if Miss Tara drops our car down, it's gonna pick up some kinetic energy, which is just gonna give it energy of movement. So as we can see. So when we start our chain reaction, we're probably gonna start it with a car. That's gonna start with some potential energy, and then it's gonna bring that kinetic energy to knock over our dominoes or knock over our chain reaction. So now Miss Tara is just gonna take our dominoes and we're just gonna set them up. Now our dominoes are not very stable, if you think about it, because our dominoes are thin and they're long, so they're easily gonna become unstable in our chain reaction. As opposed to Miss Tira, if we had like a cube. A cube would be a lot harder to knock over, so it's just a little side note. All right, I'm gonna continue to build our, um, our dominoes for our chain reaction. Now you guys can do this as long or as short as you want. And as you can see, sometimes they fall over being not as stable. And this Tara's floors are probably not very flat. And you can zigzag your pattern. You can make two patterns. For some of my older students, I'm sure it'll be very intricate. Some of your brothers and sisters might want to have some fun with us. My kids still like Legos and dominoes and cars. And they're currently making fun of me right now. So if you hear them laughing, that is them making fun of me. It is not nice. There's also going to be bloopers at the end of this of Blake's. So I'm just putting that out there as well. Okay, 
So Miss Tara is still building our chain reaction. Now at the end of our chain reaction, Miss Tara is going to have a goal post. So this is going to be like maybe to see if our chain reaction can actually produce enough energy to push our ball through this goal post. So again, this is all about experiments. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to see if it's going to work. So now Miss Tara is going to take our car. He's a heavier car, so I think it might work. All right, I'm gonna put him at the top. So we've got our potential energy, which is gonna become kinetic energy. It worked! And as you can see, our chain reaction. So our car hit our dominoes, which hit our ball, which sent our ball through our goalpost, which is awesome. So if Ms. Tara counts it, if our ball was right here, let me move it over here. It went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 playing cards long. Pretty exciting. So now Miss Tara is gonna bring over our other paper. If mommy or daddy have a chance to print it out. So here is something that you guys can write out or draw out, I should say. So it says, draw your chain reaction in order. So right here, you're gonna draw your ramp. Miss Tara can put our ramp right here. And you know Miss Tara is not an artist like Mrs. Mauer. So, so here's our ramp. I just did a little egg note, like a little line going down at this angle. And then you can draw your car. Okay. And then up here, you don't have to write this, but we've got our potential energy, which is our stored energy. As our car rolls down our ramp, he picks up energy. That's our kinetic energy. And then he starts our chain reaction. So here we've got the rolling motion. Over here we've got number two would be our dominoes. And draw our dominoes in there. And our dominoes are gonna come down. They're gonna fall down. And then our dominoes, as they fall down, they're gonna send our ball rolling through our finish line. And there's our finish line. So you can draw this at home. You can do it with mommy or daddy or your whoever caregivers with you. And then you can keep it. And you can do a lot of different experiments with this. Like for instance, Miss Tara could move our dominoes out of the way and I can take our cups and I can build a tower. You could use blocks. You could use um, Legos, anything that you can think of. You could use smaller cups, bigger cups. You can make it any way that you want. So another form of our chain reaction, and I know that you guys, we love to do this kind of stuff in STEM class, and I wish we were in STEM class together, and I wish I could see you guys because I miss you guys so much. But um, we're not, so I'm just gonna send you these videos, fun stuff you guys can do at home. Okay, so our chain reaction. I'm not even gonna put him on the ramp right now. I'm just gonna... All right, see, you guys can come up with a lot of experiments. And then when we are back in our STEM room, I wanna just take a day where you guys can just show me all the amazing chain reactions that you guys came up with. So this is what we did. We asked a question, could we make a chain reaction? We did, you totally can. We used dominoes, we used a ball, we made a finish line, um, we hit a ramp that we put our car on, so our car went down the ramp, and then he hit our dominoes, and then he hit the ball that went through our finish line. So we have potential energy, which is stored energy up here, where there's no movement. As the, as the car started to roll down the ramp, we got some, it was turning into kinetic energy, and then that kinetic energy went on and it passed through our dominoes, through the ball, through the finish line. So we made our chain reaction. So we asked our question, we had our materials, we did our experiment, and then we collected our data. Our data was, it worked, and then we were able to measure how far our chain reaction went. And it went 11 playing cards long. So you can make a chain reaction a lot longer, a lot shorter. It could zigzag. You could have two sides to it. You could do a lot of different things. So our conclusion is we can easily make a chain reaction at home. Now there's something else I want to talk to you guys about. Um, as we collect our data, 
which is kind of fun and it's really neat because then you guys can follow it and then you can do it again. And you guys could use marbles, you guys could use paper towel um, holders, you could use toilet paper um, rolls, anything that you wanna try to knock them down. I want you to think about measuring because it's always good to be able to quantify how long does it go, how wide is it. We talked about how our dominoes aren't very stable because they're so thin and they're tall, but how a cube would be more stable. So if you have something at home that is made of cubes, you could try that experiment. You could do them side by side. That would be a lot of fun. I want you guys to think out of the box because we're home and um, we have to stay in and away from people and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so we want to come up with fun stuff that we can learn and still have fun together and still kind of be together. So playing is learning. Building is definitely learning. And then counting, again, learning. So everything in our world is about learning. Okay, so if we talk about energy, we have different forms of energy. And the really fun section that we're going to do tomorrow is going to be making our own solar oven. So that's going to be really cool. That is going to use solar energy. And can you think about where we get solar energy from? Hmm. Solar energy. Solar. Solar is warm and it's naturally made. And we usually have it every single day to some extent. We do not have solar energy at nighttime. So what do you think we are going to use for solar energy? The sunshine. We love the sunshine. We've talked about the sun. It's the biggest star in the solar system. That, so we love our star. All right. But there's other forms of energy. So there is a mechanical energy. And that's energy that moves in motion. It could be a ceiling fan. Ms. Tara's going to try and turn this up to show you the ceiling fan. All right. There's our ceiling fan. He is using some mechanical energy bring it back down close up on miss tara not good then we've got electrical energy so electrical energy is going to be energy that plugs into a source an electrical source so it's going to be your ipad it's going to be a computer it could easily be your xbox if mommy lets you play xbox i'm not sure but it's going to involve a plug just like this and that a plug is going to plug into the wall where the electricity then makes a current. That current goes through the plug and it powers Miss Tara's iPad, which I like that. And now here's another form of energy. This is light energy, a form of light energy, and it's Miss Tara's flashlight. So my flashlight, I push the button and guess what? It uses energy from our, can you guess? I bet you can. Tara C. Well, maybe I can't. <laughs> maybe not. Tara's going to try to get the batteries. Bryce, I might need some help. <sighs> I didn't realize this was such a fancy flashlight. Um, <laughs> I still can't get to the batteries. Bryce, help me out. <laughs> what is happening? Oh my gosh, look at it. It's even a telescopic <laughs> flashlight. Like I said, super fancy. All right, I'm thinking batteries are somewhere in here. I could be wrong. Bryce, figure this out for a moment when I move on. Okay, so we also can get light energy from the sun, but we're gonna talk mostly about our solar energy tomorrow. Can you get it? Oh, it's not just me. Bryce can't get it either. <laughs> All right. So, but you guys know what batteries look like and our batteries are inside our flashlights and they are what, when we click it, turn it on and then we get this light, especially when it's dark, it's always nice to have. Um, another form of energy that we have is thermal energy. Can you think about thermal? Hmm. Thermal means it's gonna keep us warm. So when we put on our coats and our hats and our scarves, we are gonna try to make thermal energy. Thank you, baby. Um, it comes from well, it produces heat. So here is a form of our thermal energy. Now this is mommy or daddy's and obviously Miss Tara can do this. I wouldn't want you guys to do it, but it's Miss Tara's candle. So if you can look at my candle, 
there are heat molecules being given off here. So there's other forms that we can get thermal energy from. So if I just put my hand up here, it's warm. And we have talked about our senses and we talk about our sense of touch. We actually just talked about that. So as we are walking towards something, be it a fire, a candle, your oven, we're gonna feel it is pretty warm. And that is kind of an indication that we should not touch it, right? because our body, as we talk about our brains, and we've talked a lot about our brains, how they send that nerve down to our hand, and as our hand gets closer to the oven or to the fire and it gets warmer and warmer, it involuntarily sends a signal back to our brain that says, this could be dangerous, it could be hot, it could hurt me, and we are gonna pull our hand back. So we are never ever gonna touch any kind of fire or flame or anything like that. Or the oven or the burner, Another thing that he has thermal energy is mommy's iron when she irons your clothes. Um, the microwave, he has thermal energy. I'm trying to think of something else. Um, your hair dryer, mommy's hair dryer, that has thermal energy. So it's going to give off heat molecules. And now we're going to talk about another energy, which is kind of cool, which is sound. So Miss Tara doesn't have any instruments here at the lake house. So I just took a cup. And you guys know that we've done sound in our classroom with lots of different things. So you can tap it and you can tap it with your hands. Okay, so that is energy that's going to travel in waves and it's going to travel into our ears. And remember, we talked about our senses, our ears. So we've got this kind of cone shape that is going to grab those sound waves in. They're going to go into our ear right here. So here's our cone shape. And then it's going to go through this little tunnel. And at the end of that tunnel is our eardrum. And those sound waves are gonna bounce off that eardrum and send a message up to our brilliant brains. And our brains are gonna tell us what we're hearing. We might hear the dogs barking or the ducks outside quacking or a fire alarm that ear, 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 that tells us we gotta get out. There's a reason why our fire alarms are so loud and they hurt our ears because that's telling us a warning. We need to get away. So. We can use our senses of sight to look at lights and different energies. We can hear different energies. If you're underwater, if you're taking a bath or if you're in a swimming pool and you tap the side of your bathtub, you can hear that vibration. It comes through your ears. And then of course our mechanical energy, our ceiling fans, regular fans, things that we're gonna plug in, our um, bikes. Our, when we walk, we make mechanical energy when we run, and we should be doing as much exercising as we can. Even though we're kind of stuck away from people, we can still go outside as long as we're separated from our neighbors, and we can still do some running. You can do some jumping jacks, jump on your trampolines, whatever you've got to stay active and to stay busy and to have fun. We gotta remember that this is still a fun time because look, you're home with mommy and daddy and grandmas and grandpas and your all right, my friends, Miss Tara has set up a chain reaction outside. So I've got a ball that is right here. That is all potential energy. It's just stored energy. It's not moving yet. And then down further, I have some cups. I have some boards, some pieces of board, and then I have some boxes just out of our recycle bin. And then I put a bin behind it to try to catch the ball so it doesn't go into the water. So. Now we are going to see if we can get our chain reaction outside to work. No guarantees, but again, with our science, it's all about just trying. So Miss Tara's going to see and we're going to hope it doesn't go into the water. Chances are probably high it will. And I'll be fishing it out. Yep. Yep. And there it goes. And into the water. Okay, Miss Tara's going to go retrieve the ball. Oh, and then we'll start again. Another attempt at our chain reaction with cups and wood and recycled boxes, and here's our ball. So potential energy, gonna roll down and hit kinetic energy. Hmm. Okay, partially worked. And yet the ball is hopefully not gonna end up in the river again. Hi, my little scientists. So our chain reaction is all about failing till we succeed. We just keep coming up with more and more experiments till we get one that works. And as we can see, our soccer ball is still floating in the river, right there. 
it'll come back because there is a current. But anyway, Ms. Tira is going to attach a couple bloopers of my son that he did last night with his chain reaction. Not working out so well. I cannot wait to hear all about your guys' chain reactions. And if you guys could send them to me, that would be awesome. The link should be up and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye guys. Thank <laughs> you.